Come run it all to Coriander Society Adventures, an amazing adventures 5th edition story consisting of me, tormented by gnomes, your game master, starring as John Carmichael, the wandering warlock, it's Ninja Man Matt, and the dragon of Zolquia herself, Asena, as we rejoin our heroes atop Mount Ziamara, having just dropped a quarter ton of explosives into the liquid bubbling rock. Our heroes were psychically connected with their arch nemesis Ralzamon, the master of the unknown. Can they hunt him down to his home and defeat him once and for all? Find out on today's episode. Nailed it. Hi, everyone. Good to have you back. Happy Tuesday. Uh, Matt, what's going on in your life? I am excited to hunt down Ralzamon, master of the unknown, and finally wipe him off the face of Yord. Who do, who's who's a more annoying villain? This is for the both of you. Ralzamon or Zorbius? Uh, Ralzamon, easily. We've right. never basically seen Zorbius. Yeah, We've seen Zorbius' uses... robots a the lot. The Zorbots are very annoying. Is it the voice or the fact that they just pop out of nowhere? Uh, yeah, they just pop out of nowhere and then you yeah. have to kill them. That's true. That's true. I don't think Ralzamon's see... that annoying. I'm quite wow. pleased with him. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like the robots, they, they, they show up out of nowhere, mm -hmm. but they kind of like obey the laws of like, they're going to come from somewhere. But Ralzamon can literally, he showed up in astral space one time. Like mm -hmm. the dude can just be anywhere he wants because of his whole psychic, you know, psychic projections. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Get off of that. No. <laughs> Pods, what's going on with you? How are things? Things are good. We had a break last week, which was nice. Mm -hmm. um, got to tune into the community game and like mess with people a little bit. So that's uh, fun. It's nice to be on the other side of things, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, speaking of which. <laughs> what? Already? <laughs> <laughs> we, we moved 10 packs of stream loots cards. Oh, no. My job here is done. Remove one character from the scene until dramatically appropriate to return. It's got to be one of your NPCs. Um, it's got to be one um, of your NPCs. Uh, all right. Well, I'm let not me the last... DM. <laughs> what? What? No, nothing. Nothing. You... All right. I th it seemed like you wanted us to choose. And I was like, well... Oh, no, I'm not, no. I'm not letting you choose. I'm just, you know, like, letting that hang in, in the air for here. a moment. Exactly. I, I'm, I'm running this show. Okay. Here oh, we are. Oh, really? Yes. Yes. Well, it's either me or chat. That's really the two showrunners on this. On this wild <laughs> That's what I was hinting at, yes. <laughs> but it's definitely not you. Anyways, when last we left our heroes, they stood above the bubbling cauldron of Mount Ziamara, where Ralzamon had contacted the ancient lava guardian spirit of the mountain and rose it from the depths to battle you as he sent Torrents of molten lava down the slopes, attempting to destroy the sunken circle of Tlaikalel, where John buried a piece of the flesh of Kur, the void dragon who threatens to consume all of reality. Hoping to destroy this otherworldly threat, Ralzamon was willing to sacrifice t cities and villages that would have been wiped out in the lava's path, and death on such a mass scale would have summoned Atropus, the world-born dead, which lurks in the darkness out there somewhere in space, slowly drifting closer to Yord. If, a if Atropus arrives, then the dead will rise and this world could die. But our heroes have completely wiped out his cult with a quarter ton of explosives as well as their own cunning and guile. And uh, they've defeated, a Asena punched the lava god in the face. <laughs> and so now our heroes stand atop the volcano and they had a vision of a crystalline chamber deep within the caverns. Reflections of Josiah Parsons, the man who became Ralzamon, master of the unknown in every facet. This, inside this mountain, is the true home of his psyche. Locked into these crystal facets, perhaps if you can find this cave deep beneath the volcano, a path has been illuminated to you. If only you can track it down, perhaps you could defeat Ralzamon once and for all. Uh, before we get into it, is there anything that we need? Any questions that we've got? Any business to attend to? You may move on and enter the volcanic caves when you are ready to do so. We got pretty banged up during that, so depending on how, uh, how long it takes us to arrive at Josiah Parsons' hidden enclave, John is going to be giving an inspiring speech to attempt to shore up his companions' resolve to ensure that they are ready for their, hopefully, final okay. 
interaction. I'm not going to I'm not going to give a hour, but I am going to give a cinematic short rest if you want to spend it. And it, so you can do a speech and you can spend hit dice to heal if you need it. Oh, cool. I, I only need 10 minutes, so that sounds great. Yeah, but yeah, you, you both gain the benefits of a short rest um, over the course oh. of these 10 minutes. As you stop, you eat, you get ready, you discuss your plans, little montage. John gives a, an inspiring speech of how, about how this time we're going to take him down once and for all. I don't know if this is accurate, but I'm definitely at full health. John busted up <laughs> a lot of his... Uh, one shot tattoos in order to do that weird i'm going to absorb the fire and then didn't spend an inspiration to spread the healing i got from absorbing the fire to both john and asana so yeah he did pump into full hp that's true at that's the end true. of their that last is a thing that happened okay <laughs> so it's um, his akura okay well it, you it's get, too bad i didn't spend any warlock spells because i would normally get those back ah, too bad sucks to suck but Asena, you do get your focus points back. John, you would get those back. Uh, looks like everyone else is in pretty good shape, all things considered. Everyone gains 14 temporary hit points. So mm. that's uh, the fattest that's nice. of loot. You gain a magic item. Yes. Ooh, I like card that. that just got played. Uh, let's go ahead nice. and roll. Matt, roll 1d4. One. Oh, one. Pods, roll 1d100. Hey. Interesting. Forty-eight. 48. All right, potion of healing. <laughs> Great. Every time that card gets played tonight, it'll escalate. But you rolled a one, oh. so you went on the lowest treasure table. So, you know, hey, it don't need to be like it is, but it do. <sighs> That happens. Thanks, yeah. Matt. Well, yeah, you're very welcome. <laughs> <laughs> He's already throwing. It's incredible. All right. You've re gathered your resources. However, your car exploded. And you teleported the what? exploding car. Yeah, you tell last episode, the car got lit on fire when the high That's priest true. of Ralzamon invoked a column of flame down on the car. And the car was holding a lot of dynamite. Yeah. So it went into the... It was teleported in a desperate last-ditch effort by John into the caldera of the volcano, which exploded, which is why there's like lava everywhere and all sorts of gnarliness going on. It's very hot here, by the way, swelteringly hot. Fortunately, Yord uses pulp adventure rules, so you can actually stand near lava and not immediately suffocate. But yeah, also Mama Shimada has played an extra munitions card. So the party gets, this is the first time this card has been played tonight, one disposable item, a grenade, a scroll, a potion, a spell bullet. Is there anything oh. that you need? I mean, yeah, there's a lot we need. <laughs> uh, since, I, since I threw the last one, uh, Paz, did you have anything that Asena would be very excited about? Asena doesn't need anything. Oh, Asena well, has Asena doesn't need anything. Fists yeah, and her sure. Shotguns and her laser cannon. And you said up to whip. second level? Uh, e yeah, up to second level. Perfect. Then, yes, uh, John is going to have prepared a potion of up to second level. Ooh, 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 ooh. What would be the most helpful? Ooh, would be the most yeah, that annoying. could be nice. <laughs> the most annoying. That sounds great. I said helpful because I kind of assumed that, you know, that was the direction you were going to go. John is going to go ahead and have prepared a potion of mirror image. Okay, and who's got that potion? Uh, Asana. All right. What is that? It creates shadow. Oh, I don't know. You don't need it, right? I just thought it'd be cool for you to have. Well, it. then why'd you give it to me? I don't know. Maybe you'll pop it and see what happens. Why don't you just going to use something that I don't know? John informs you that it is a potion of mirror image. And I can only assume, with Asana's vast understanding of how things work, that it probably summons mirrors. <laughs> And John refuses to elaborate. So if you need to check your, your look in the middle of combat, you're covered. It's a bonus. You're action. covered. Yeah, just pop the potion and you're all set. I don't need to look at a mirror. Well, then I guess you'll never need that potion. She said, why, why don't you take it then? Oh, well, I suppose if you won't find any use for it, I'll certainly make use of it during our next fight 
I say and puts it in her pocket. That's what I thought. Add it to and John inventory. continues his expiring speech. <laughs> Add it to your inventory because I'm not keeping track of that. All right. Now, because the car exploded, Ian Fletcher, famous adventurer, needs to carve out a different path for you to make your way back. So that uh, my work here is done card is going to apply to him. He is going to be gone for the rest of the adventure. Or oh, no. until an appropriate time for him to dramatically reappear. Okay. So... It's just Asena, John Carmichael, Chester Morton, the gun for hire, and Lawrence Booker Green. The man from hey man, the other I have world. a question. Fire away. Can we just say that Ian never came back and got blasted away in that fridge and just we have no idea where That's he is? That's true. He got blasted away in the fridge. He's out of here. That is completely correct. And there's a dynamic entry card played, so... <laughs> <laughs> I think I made a joke. What if Ian goes all the way around the planet of Yord and then comes back in the same fridge? <laughs> oh, like the Mercury space capsule. Yeah. He got just blasted into the atmosphere and is just vibing up there. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, he, arrived, he comes back dusting himself off like, I have no idea what just happened. But we survived, <laughs> so that's fine. Shall we find this cave? Anything else? Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Did we just have an act of God that took somebody away and then a streamlets card that brought them back? It, it was, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but chat played the streamlets card, all right? It was their choice to reverse it. So I didn't, yeah, I didn't yeah. step on anyone's toes. It has just been hey, reversed. I, <laughs> I survived somehow. I, Let's go. Yeah, I'm here for it. I'm here for it. Uh, John follows Ian Fletcher down the mountain. Okay. Does anyone have anything else they need to do before you proceed down the mountain? Okay. Uh, no. The side of Mount Ziamara continues to qu quiver and shake. The smell of sulfur, like the very bowels of hell itself, erupt. Clouds of ash and volcanic stones fall as Mount Ziamara breathes her rage into the atmosphere. The danger to the nearby villages has passed though the nearby area is absolutely going to get completely blasted. Ian Fletcher lights a torch and leads you down into the caves, following the paths. Some of these areas seem to have been carved out by the ancient Zolkuians who built the shrine to the god of Ziamara here. But others are naturally occurring, fractured by years and years of tectonic activity. It is swelteringly hot, and as you go deeper and deeper into the mountain, this eerie feeling of being watched, the almost suffocating presence of the master of the unknown, falls all around you. The lights cast by the lanterns seem to flicker and dim, shrinking smaller and smaller and smaller, until they barely hold the cloying darkness at bay all around you. Uh, can John produce some light mm -hmm. to help with this? Yeah, you can do that. Even your light it's seems much. Yeah, it's a small light, and even it seems to be struggling as if it's being choked out. Even though it's a magical light, it's like a flame deprived of oxygen. This pressing, crushing will. The power of Ralzmon that you have felt so many times as he sent his minions or possessed your friends or otherwise worked his psychic powers upon you. It is getting stronger and stronger as you enter the mountain. And we're getting have... closer. And so, at long last, oh. you finally come at the very threshold of destruction. This world will burn if you survive. Um, excuse me, won't it also burn if we do survive? I, I just said that if you do survive, it will burn. Well, well, okay, if we don't survive, it also burns? No, I shall hold the darkness at bay. I shall stand in the threshold and keep the outer powers away from our world. The way it was meant to be. None of your otherworldly magic. I have gazed into the abyss of infinity, and what I have seen must be defeated at all costs. And your oh. lives are no cost at all. So you're trying to be the savior of Yord. But that's my job. 
Your job is to die like the abomination that you've become. Well, that's not what the wall said was going to happen, so. Good luck. The wall lied to you. You want <laughs> to see what really happened? I need everybody to roll a wisdom saving throw, please. Oh, shoot. Okay. Take the first result, unless there's a reason that you should have advantage on that. Uh, quick question, DM. Mm -hmm. Is my cat also making a wisdom saving no, throw? No, your, it okay. your, your cat is exempt on account of being a cat. That's, that's what I was hoping. Okay, John, you resisted. Where is good old Ralzaman? Let me pull up our boy here. Master of the unknown. Asena. Unless you've got some sort of spice you want to throw in that, I may have bad news for you. Any thoughts? I have inspiration. You want to burn that from your character sheet? Yeah. Done and done. Well, can I use the one that I Whoops. got today? Yeah, uh, ignore, ignore that. Ignore okay. that. Yeah, you can use the one that you got today. Go ahead and just roll once. It's either the 13 or this. An eight. <laughs> <laughs> Unlucky. John is going to go ahead, and as Ralzaman is attempting to take control of the party or do whatever kind of weird shenanigans he's always trying to do mm -hmm. with his very annoying mind, John takes hold of his talisman, invoking the power of Tiamat, the dragon of Avernus, and eventual lord of all dragons if they have their way. He's going to use a reaction and cause. Asena to succeed instead on their saving throw, and he now has to make a wisdom save against corruption as he invokes mm. the power of this ability. Okay, let's see it. That's a success. John's You've resisted totally the fine. Yeah. All right. John shudders for a moment as he invokes this power, and uh, as the feeling passes, he gives Asena a wink. Why don't we go ahead and give it to this guy? Or whatever he is when we find him. Well, as you're having this discussion, the world around you shifts. The darkness that has been encroaching, getting deeper and deeper, suddenly flares away as your light shines across the open sky, no longer underground. Instead, the sounds of the Zolkwian jungle are all around you. Behold. Figures oh. dressed in fine garb stand by stones carved with ancient Zolkwian imagery. A pit down below, a single man stands with a bowl of incense in one hand and a lit torch in the other, chanting in the ancient Zolkwian tongue and even older languages. Upon the steps is a young girl a toddler child, can't be older than two years old, and Asena. John, you're looking across the way at Lawrence, who looks back at you in confusion, but there's no sign of Ian Fletcher or Chester Morton. And who are the others that have joined us in this circle? You recognize them from an old photograph that you found back when this adventure began in Foster Talon's apartment. All around the circle, Samuel Donahue, Gladys Boyce Donahue, Augustine Carrington. The three of them hold up offerings of their own, wearing ritual garbs just robes and cloaks clearly over their expedition outfits. And standing in the middle is Josiah Parsons in the flesh. Asena, when you look over the young girl, Rose Donahue, her head is marked and painted. Her cheeks are marked and painted with ritual signs and some sort of red smear. Is it blood? You don't know. The tiny, tiny near infant has similar marks. He whines and murmurs uncomfortably, disconcertingly. 
And even though you're an adult, you find the same marks on yourself. Oh, shoot. Like what do you do? Looking on myself, trying to see everything. Okay. There's marks on your hand, front and backs of your hands, on your cheeks, on your forehead, on your feet. We, we, we aren't here right now, right? Like this is not happening right now, right? Can I hear that? I'm still trying to figure that out. Are you okay? Uh, sure, yeah. This is really weird. It's especially weird considering, I believe, you and I were the only ones in our group that were able to withstand Josiah Parsons' mental intrusion. Odd we find ourselves here despite such success can you ask lawrence can he move and also dm can john move from the spot he's in yes you are able to move around there's a candle not in your hand but at the floor near the stone by which you stand and there are two more places within the circle with no one standing there quite yet. Is that right? Correct. Correct. And these three candles are being held by the members of the Society of the Eclipse. All the other candles have simply been laid on the ground. Do the three society members notice any of us here? They have not noticed you. Do they notice the little girl? They seem to see her. Roll an insight check. And if I'm still able to reply to Asena, you John are. wants to mentally feedback. Asena, do you recall this from your dream? Or is this entirely new? Oh, I've never been here. I mean, maybe, I, maybe, but I don't remember, no. This isn't what Wait. it looked like. Mate, what does John notice, and are we still in the mountain? Does this look like the same kind of geography? No, and, you can see no. the open sky above you, the jungle of Zolquia all around you. You can feel the humidity and hear the chirp of birds, the song of a thousand insects, the frogs singing to each other in a creek not far away, almost blotting out the chants of the Society of the Eclipse as they intone in ancient Aryavartan, Asonian, Zolquian, Kameshian, sacred languages and prayers to a thousand different gods all at once. Do both of you speak Zolquian? I believe you do, right? I John do, doesn't? yeah. I mean, you got your John has... Thing, uh... right? Yeah, I mean, John has been to the Zokian jungles a few mm -hmm. times, and he has interacted with Zokian gods, so I'm assuming he has a basic understanding yeah. of how it. Do, and how does your cryptolinguistics work? Let me pull that up. While you do so, you're looking around, getting a read on everybody. You notice that the two Donahues are filled with hope, trepidation, but excitement, almost exaltation. Augustine is looking directly at Asena, worried but proud. And Josiah is swept up in the ritual and the ceremony of it all, completely solemn, completely carried away in the moment. Augustine is the grandfather, right? No, Augustine is your biological father oh i don't know him no that's because he died on this expedition right so my question was going to be is this the past <laughs> nobody here has ever seen this moment before so it's hard for you to tell if it's the past but as you stand there 
in the ancient Zolkmian tongue, Josiah Parsons chants. Upon the steps between what is and what is not, the children gathered, sanctified, and from them emerges the child of the eclipse, whose coming heralds a new age, who brings forth the great eclipse, the end of all strife, the cessation of wars, the new era everlasting. Asina, these are the very words that were inscribed upon the shrine of the great dragon that you discovered all those years ago and only recently found as it lay in the path of the lava. Can I try and step out of my body? <laughs> Go ahead. Um, sort of like testing whether this is the same sort of like dreamscape that we were in, like when we visited Cenepulker. Mm -hmm. She's going to like try and focus and see if she can become like a third person view. Okay. What happens is, roll a charisma check for me, a flat charisma check. Okay. I'm not very good at that. By sheer force That's of will, safe. you step away. But when you do, there's nobody left behind. Everyone's acting like you're still there on the steps, but your body in this space moved away, huh. leaving behind nothing. Okay. But you are able to move around. So it's it's like kind of like the same thing when we were at Cenepulchers. Like it's like you like replaying, like your videotape. So what do you want to do, Asena? Should we go along with this, or do you want to? Interrupt the ceremony. Well, I guess the question is, why is Ralzamon showing us this? I think he's biding his time. The longer we worry about what we're doing here, the longer it'll take to get to him and he has time to prepare. Or he wants us to see something, probably you, to see something, something that's going to shape you at your very core, make you susceptible to whatever his machinations are for us. Whatever we do, we should probably do it quickly. The chanting continues. As... Do we even know how to get out if we wanted to? I mean, you punch really hard. <laughs> and I'm beginning to draw some conclusions about what's happening here. And mate, to answer your question about uh, John's linguistics, uh, effectively, whenever we're trying to decipher something that John does not know, which he doesn't actually have Zokian as a language under his belt. Uh, you, the DM, need to make a check for me so I don't know if I'm succeeding or not. Uh, where it is a DC of 20 for a simple message, 25 for a standard message, or 30 or higher for an intricate or very old uh, kind of text or okay. speech. And what's your modifier? And, uh, my modifier depends on whatever it is that you say it is. Um, because we never gave John proficiency in linguistics, I'm not sure if we just use his half history that he gets. How about history? Perfect. Let's do that. Then that's going to be plus nine. Okay. You know, I'm going to redo that because I was supposed to. Do I was going to say you're supposed to do it secretly. Yeah. I yeah. The wrong button because <laughs> I'm very good at what I do. All right. Secret rolls. Secrets. We'll take a mulligan on that. Okay. You understood the gist of it, John. Perhaps some of the poetic underpinnings didn't make their way through, but you, you got the gist of what was said. Okay. Which was? I will paste it in chat. But to reiterate, Upon the steps between what is and what is not, the children gather, sanctified, and from them emerges the child of the eclipse, whose coming heralds a new age who brings forth the great eclipse, the end of all strife, the cessation of wars, the new era everlasting. And as those words echo amongst these ancient stones and light begins to seep from the ground up 
along the intricate, beautiful carvings on each of the stones, all facing each other, some of them broken in half and covered with old moss. As the light flows up, the society of the eclipse briefly looks at each other with excitement and then redoubles their efforts, redoubles their focus, channeling whatever occult powers, whatever scraps of magic they've managed to muster in their time. And light begins to pour up from the symbols carved around Ralzamon. Light begins to glow within the pit and it flows along the carvings as if it is glowing water, defying all logic, flowing up towards the children gathered on the step. Asena, this wasn't supposed to have happened, or if it did, we were either misled or didn't quite have the full understanding of what happened to you and your family. Quickly, check in with Lawrence. Find out if their group interrupted this ceremony before your family was torn from their intended purpose, or if Rosamond is simply showing us what was to be. This would have been open to Lawrence as well. The communication. One XP. You are muted, mate. Yeah. Plus one XP. Okay. I'm going to roll a religion check for our man Lawrence. Also, like with seeing the light, mm -hmm. Asena will go back into the body and then try to pick up Rose. Okay. You're going to pick her up? Yeah. All right. The Society of the Eclipse looks at you as if a spell had been broken, as if something was wrong. Zaya turns around, glares at you. Lawrence watches the ritual and says, this is what happened. This is what called us. And at that moment, the ground within the pit ruptures, crumbling down below. Howls and screams and unearthly noises rise from beneath. Ralzamon, Josiah Parsons, scrambles to catch his grasp, teeters as the pieces fall out from beneath him, and plummets into a spiraling ethereal vortex. The light changes, engulfing all of those involved in the ceremony. It flashes and flares around Asena, around Rose, around the young infant on the steps, though it doesn't run up the way that it should have in this particular dream. Josiah Parsons plummets down into this glowing void and vanishes. At the exact same time, a terrible scream, a gurgling, rotten screech rends the air. And far above you, the sky that was filled with clouds and the occasional star burns as a bright comet emerges directly over this pit and begins streaking across the sky, spreading the power of magic across all of Yord permanently changing children born in this generation, giving rise to the gifted of Northport and those across the world. The Society of the Eclipse looks down into the pit and screams for Josiah, but then thinking quickly, Augustine runs over and the other two realize what's going on. They follow, going to the steps where their children are precariously close to this void, this howling vortex open beneath you. John and Asena, what do you do? John moves forward, and seeing that Asena is trying to save Rose, he's going to do the same. I'm, okay. I'm going to back up. All right. You back up. You bring Rose with you. And as this happens... You cannot change the past. You cannot undo what has been done. No matter what feeble wishes pass through you, it is sealed in stone. Witness the fruits of these works. And rising from the pit is the enormous spectral image of Ralzamon, master of the unknown. 
Wait, so all of that was just a dramatic entrance? <laughs> uh, roll for initiative, please. <laughs> nice. I'll take that as a yes. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> That's a 50 XP minus. <laughs> oh, are we counting those now? I'll start no, watching that. Intense. No, we're not. I'm I'm joking. Matt, roll for initiative. Oh my god, yes, you're dis sir. you disgust oh, me. Shit. You disgust me, <laughs> sir. Okay. Ralzamon emerges from the depths. John, it is your turn. What do you do? <sighs> okay, well. I guess let's get this started. John's going to go ahead and use his bonus action in order to place the Curse of Tiamat upon Rausamon, Master of the Unknown. Okay. A and John... Streamlitz oh, card has been played. Uh-oh, what, what is this? In the name of the moon. Oh! That's the one where if you give a dramatic speech and name your, uh, your enemies' injustices and declare their punishment, you gain a significant advantage, a power-up. I think we should resolve that for Asena because okay, that's your while Rausamon hates John, Asena is kind of arch enemies with Rausamon. That seems more appropriate. Okay, then carry on. Does the curse allow a saving that. throw of any kind? Nope, it's just a dot that's on. It just them happens. Now. Okay, dot just dot happens. dots. Uh, and why don't we just go ahead and start off strong? John's gonna go ahead and take out his enormous bronze revolver. Uh, cock back the hammer and activate the warp spasm and go okay. to town. How many charges of that do you have left? Just one. Okay. Go for it. And John's gonna go for it, as you say. Let's go ahead and start shooting here. Um, afterwards, I'm just gonna move John around, but that'll be the mm -hmm. end of it if you want to start prepping whoever's next. It's Asena who's next, so Asena, plan your turn. There's only one enemy in this combat. It's not a huge brawl like the last one was. All right, here we go. Sending the first one, activating both the Tiamat's Curse and the Warp Spasm and Island's Bane. Nope, not Island's Bane, because this is not a Fiend or a Fae. Uh, and here we go. Sending Krontaka the first. It's always just a huge, enormous pile of dice. It just and spreads out across the map. Then we have uh, Krontaka the second. And then we're going to double tap for Krontaka the third. <laughs> ga, ga, ga. All right, so how much of this damage is actually real? Uh, what do you mean, define real? <laughs> like, how much of this damage does he take? All of it, as written? There's you, nothing I have you, to be like, ignore that no, damage? No, 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 you need to make a DC 18 wisdom saving throw against the psychic damage. Only. Got it, thank you. Well, he has a plus 14 on those, so. Hey man, That's you know what? Do I make three of these? You. Three of them, yep. A 32, a 20, and a 16. So I take the last go. one. Do the math for me. Yes. I don't feel like it. I'm going to do the math for you. So that's going to be 16 plus 22 is going to be 38 plus all of the last one, which is 29. 38 plus 29 is 48, 58, 57 points of damage. Okay. 57, you said? 57. All right. And from here, John's going to run, run, run. Uh, let's see. Oh, by the way, were any of those? Let me just double check. Was any of that a 19? No, none of that was a 19. Unfortunate. Okay. And uh, let's see. I, I figure, like, let's just... I don't know if... These are still here. These, these spectral images are still present here. Yes, they are. Don't likely want to get too close to that. John Ignore has 60 that. feet of movement, so he's going to go ahead and just hide behind this rock next to Lawrence over here. Okay. A card has been played. All hail Ralzamon. Millions <laughs> of Ralzamon appear. So oh, wait, on. actually, mate, sorry. Are, is this area accessible? Yeah. Oh, okay. No, the whole Hold map is accessible. Eh, okay, good enough. Well, then, yeah, John's going to go way over here then. <laughs> okay. Minions of Ralzamon appear as the phantoms of Samuel, Gladys, and Augustine Carrington all turn and become avatars of Ralzamon's glory. Yeah. <sighs> Each one of them vanishes, replaced 
by another image of Ralzamon. Oh my god. Nice. And because you are in the heart of his power, Ralzamon is going to use his uh, home field advantage to unleash a psychic, a mind crush against Asena. Between turns. Does a 22 hit? Yeah. Asena, you take 16 points of psychic damage. Yeah, okay. All right. And now it's your turn. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay, I... Th- so, Asena had backed up. Mm-hmm. With Rose. To, with Rose. But after seeing Ralzamon, she's going to rush up to the edge of the platform here. Okay. There's a howling void below. Yeah. And she's going to speak to Ralzamon, but psychically. Okay. Hey, Rousey Pooh. I am Josiah Parsons, the last lord of the army of the Eclipse. I am not King Rousey Pooh. Yeah, so Rousey Pooh, um, I really quite liked your entrance. You almost got me there. It was very intriguing. Um, but I would appreciate if all of this ended. It's been real fun being arch enemies, arch nemesises, I think it's called. Is that what it's called? Do you know? You are not my nemesis. You are a blight that I must exterminate to undo what has been done. You think so highly of yourself, but you are merely a plague ship sent into the future to wreak havoc. Well, you see, the way that I see it is whatever you tried to do to me when I was a kid failed. And so it must be destroyed. And so you admit that you are a failure. I was misled and deceived by powers, the very same powers we swore to fight. That is neither here nor there. The point is that you failed, you created me, and it seems like I'm just nature here to take you down. Because whatever you're doing wasn't meant to be. You are welcome to try. Okay. All right. That was your uh, In the Name of the Moon speech. What does Asena want to do after confronting her nemesis? Um, I am going to take out my spine lash. And I'm okay. going to spine lash him from... As you pull spine lash, the whip made from bones and vertebrae, it sways and swings and blades pop out of it. For this is a weapon that you plucked from the very depths of dream, from a psychic vision, impossibly across time and space. And now you find yourself once more within a mindscape. And here, its bite is strongest. Here, its powers grow. This is what you're going to get for that in the name of the moon card that makes you stronger. So go ahead and make this attack. Okay. That's cool. What did I do? Uh, oh my gosh! <laughs> uh, uh, um, okay, that's a natural 20. Matt, what does Tasha's mind whip do? I'm very glad you asked. Let me go ahead and drop that for you. <laughs> okay. So that would um, be 66 psychic damage. Yeah, Asana, go ahead and roll 66, please. And did you forget did it, that it was loaded with 
No, it's just on, on a crit that's particularly gnarly, that's all. He has disadvantage on this save because of the enhanced power of this place. Oh, I wow, didn't do that so that's well. That's downright tragic. That's downright tragic. <laughs> okay, but we're still adding 11 points of damage. And the secondary effect fails because Ralzamon is being of pure psychic power. But the spine lash wraps around his incorporeal form and begins to squeeze and cut into him, glowing with the same psychic energy of this world. You inflict a total of 14 plus 6, so that's 20 plus half of that. So you inflict 25 points of damage. Ralzamon is restrained. And the power of the Mind Whip spell has not left the, the whip. Oh! What? Yeah. Oh. You can make two attacks, right? You have extra attack? Uh, yeah. Okay. Roll this attack with advantage because it's already wrapped around him. Oh, okay. yeah. Okay. That is another hit. And we're going to just do that full damage. Roll 3d6 for the psychic damage. And he has to roll another saving throw at disadvantage. Yeah, he made that. So ah. he's going to take another 15 plus 3. He takes another 18 points of damage, and he is still restrained by the whip. Wait, uh, a 14 doesn't save? Oh, yeah. Or a 14 he, saves? Yeah, yeah, you're right. He would have failed that. Oh, I didn't even see that for some reason. Ignore me. And on his next turn... He must choose whether he gets a move, an action, or a bonus action. Only gets one of the three. This does not nerf his legendary actions, but... Uh, he also can't take reactions as well. He also can't take reactions. Two more cards have been played. It's super effective. I'm going to pull that, that up. Down? And catchphrase has also been played. <laughs> it's super effective. Learn an enemy's weak point or vulnerabilities to deal extra damage. So, that attack is going to deal double damage. Nice. This round, because of this. So, oh, heck yeah. Yeah, we'll just stack on another large amount of damage. And this central specter is already flickering as the whip lashes around it. Hey, mate, somewhat yes. of a cool question. What mm -hmm. time is it right now? Is it late? Is it early? Is it midday? <laughs> In this world, it's night. And uh, there's a lunar But you said eclipse. that there was sun above. Is the sun, like, rising? No, the sun is completely obscured by an eclipse. Okay, but, like, what time is it? <laughs> Noon. Okay. Why? I, I guess no reason now. Okay. <laughs> Would I be able to spend an inspiration to say it's not noon? Yes, this is a malleable mindscape. That is entirely oh, possible. What fantastic. Uh, what time do John, be? John would like it to be dawn. Okay. The sun dips beneath the... It goes all the way around, wraps all the way around, and comes back up, and it's dawn, but it's still completely eclipsed by the moon. A, That's cool. A weird, I, I, eerie corona and blood-red light shines from the east. Asena, it is still that. your turn. It is still your turn. You've used your action to hit him twice. You got anything else? Uh... I can use a bonus action, can I? You, if you have something that uses a bonus action, yes, you can. Um, you could pop a potion that John just gave you. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> what Does do you John want? tell me to? John says, you should probably pop that potion, Asena. That's a pretty big Rousamon. I don't That's the biggest Rousamon we've ever seen. Right now. It doesn't do that. It makes a lot of you, actually. A lot of me? Yeah. Asena will take out the potion and chug it. <laughs> okay. As you chug the potion, reflections, identical reflection, reflective clones of you appear. Three reflective clones of you appear. They surround you, they shift around in position, and they match exactly your movements. Everything that you do, they also do. Whoa. Can I, like, do a dance? Yeah, you do a dance, and they all, it's like you've got your own line of backup, your own chorus going on, your own dance line going on. I'm gonna look behind me at Rose and see if she is watching. Yeah, she's watching, and she's like, what, three, four? So she's just yeah. staring at you as you do your dance? 
It's gonna be okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, is that it for Asena? Um, is drinking a potion a bonus action? It is a bonus action. Okay, then I'm done. Well, okay. should I move? Um, you've got him restrained right now with the whip. If yeah. you move, then you're going to probably lose that. I'm done. Okay. You stand your ground. Because the extra Ralzamons have been summoned, all four of them unleash their psychic powers. And all four of them attack Asena with Mind Crush. Oh. However, Asena has Mirror Image active. Yes. And there's four of me. There's four of them. So, one of them targets you. The big one targets you with its psychic attack. Asena, roll 1d20, please. Okay. Eighteen. The psychic attack, instead of hitting you, targets one of the, your reflections. That reflection immediately pops out of existence. You now have two reflections left. One, the Ralzwan on the left unleashes its psychic powers. Roll 1d20 to shift the target. You must roll an eight or higher. A thirteen. Its psychic attack hits one of your sh mirror clones. Poof, it's gone. You only have one mirror clone left. The one on the right unleashes a mind crush to attempt to destroy you once and for all. You must roll an 11 or higher to shift the attack to your last remaining mirror clone. This one successfully targets you. Mm. Mind crush. That should not be a disadvantage, so I'm going to take the first result. A 13 doesn't hit you, right? No. 13, 13, 13! Wow, super Whoa. unlucky. The triple 13, that's mad unlucky. All right, the middle Ralzamon unleashes a mind crush at you. You still have a clone. You still have a mirror image because the attack missed. So go ahead and uh, roll 1d20. 17. 17. The last psychic attack hits your mirror clone, destroying it. All your mirrors are gone, but the potion did its job. John is chuffed. John is extremely <laughs> it's just beaming from behind that rock. <laughs> All right. I liked those. The less of you in this wretched world, the better. Okay. Mr. Mr. Lawrence Booker Green himself is going to cast Bane on the backup singers. All three of them have to roll charisma saving throws, and if they fail... Okay, success. Success. Mad success. He takes cover behind this rock and... Wait, no, that's not what he does. He takes his staff, his stick that he's been carrying around, and he throws it on the ground, oh. and it turns into a freaking snake. I knew that was going to happen. This dude's Moses. I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> it turns oh into a my freaking goodness. snake. But then he jumps behind this, and the freaking snake slithers up to this Ralzamon right here and attempts to constrict. It fails, but, you know, there's a snake now, so there's that going for him, <laughs> which is nice. It is now Ralzamon himself's turn. Ralzamon is going to use hmm, Psychic Insight to grant one of his clones a 1d10 inspiration die. This clone gives this clone a 1d10 inspiration die. This nice. clone gives this clone a 1d10 inspiration die. And this clone gives Mega Ralzamon a 1d10 inspiration die. They all use their bonus actions to power each other up. And then, let's see. Mega Ralzamon is going to use mesmerism, attempting to hypnotize Asena as she squeezes it and it starts to flicker out of existence with her bone spike whip. Asena, roll a wisdom saving throw, DC 17. Okay. A five. That is not going to cut it. 
is there anything you want to say? Anything you want to do? You good mm-hmm. here? I'm fine. Okay. All right. Asena, you become hypnotized. Hypnotized? Yes. You are now hypnotized. What does that mean? It means you stand there. It means this round, you have disadvantage on everything and your speed is halved. And he's going to continue. No, you have disadvantage on your attack rolls and your ability checks, not your saves yet. And he's going to continue to focus this power on you. The longer he focuses on it, the more hypnotized you become. All three of the other Ralzamons attack you with Mind Crush. Uh, the first one, I'm going to use this disadvantage that I have from chat. And they don't get advantage to hit you yet. Mate, is Chester here? Chester's, yeah, Chester's here. Where is Chester? Been here the whole time. And question, even though Chester's not my familiar anymore, is does John have a sympathetic enough connection where he can still cast spells through Chester or is that severed now? For a point of inspiration, yes. Yeah, uh, I don't want this to happen to Asena. So can we say that Chester <laughs> is right next to Asena when this is all going down? Mm-hmm. I want to drop a inspiration mm-hmm. and using the power of the talisman, John is going to have Chester channel the invisibility spell through John's infernal talisman. He expends a charge and as the cat brushes up against a Sena, she goes invisible. Okay. Are you able to use that as a reaction? I can with my talisman of the infernal. Uh, I can. Okay. All right. Asena, you become invisible. You are still mesmerized but you are invisible. All the three of the psychic crush attacks that are about to hit are going to be at disadvantage. This first one, however, landed a 20. So you take 14 points of psychic damage. Okay. The second one, I've now expunged my disadvantage from a stream loots card, but I still have disadvantage from you being invisible. So the second Ralzmon clone is going to attack with mind crush at disadvantage. 13 misses. I'm spending my 1d10 bonus die that I gave myself. Does an 18 hit, Asena? Yes. Okay. You take 18 points of psychic damage. The third Ralzamon also attacks with Mind Crush at disadvantage. A 22 hits for 16 points of psychic damage. That is it for the Ralzamons. John, it's your turn. Do you have to concentrate on the invisibility or no? John does have to concentrate on invisibility, yes. Okay, so you are concentrating, but aside from that, you're good to go. What would you like to do? Well, here's the fun thing. Uh, Through the power of bending reality, uh, John was able to make it dawn. The nice thing about dawn is that John gets all of his Krantaka charges back at dawn. So he's going to do <laughs> the same exact thing he did last time. Okay, okay, time out, time out, time out. Yeah. This works, uh-huh. but it reverts when you leave the mindscape. That's fine. That's fine. I kind of figured, but I don't need them when I leave the mindscape. I just need them <laughs> the bad guy's here. Um, also, both of you gain two lucky dice. Oh. From chat. They just... Chat just played luck is on our side. You both gain two lucky dice. Is that oh, nice. uh, one that can be banked or is it only for this encounter? Until the end of the session. They expire at the end okay. of tonight's episode. Perfect. Also, Great. Asena, uh, you have a limit break, meaning the more damage you take, the more powerful oh, you become. Nice. We, will, we will get to that on your turn. You will get to that on your turn. All right. Well, and there's a catchphrase gonna... on there's a catchphrase out there. Oh, fantastic. So John's going to use one of the charges he just got. Mm-hmm. John's going to uh, use his incredible speed to rush up and move right next to Asena. Mm-hmm. And he's going to take some shots at Ralzamon, Master of the Unknown, which, hey, what do you know? It's got Warp Spasm again. <laughs> uh, so suck on... Oh, is that a 19? Dang it! It's not a 19. Oh, well. Unlucky. Uh, attack the first. Attack the second. Now that one is a 19, so that is actually a critical hit. Do you want me just to roll that one more time and add that to the uh, the total? Yes, please. Do so. All right. Rolling normally just to add that to the critical. And then we'll take off the bonus damage that doesn't mm-hmm. get added. So the plus uh, the plus five. So we'll Once just minus again, that by five. I'm making you do all the math, by the way. I will do all the math. And then his, uh, his final attack. John uses a bonus action to reload. Because uh, mm-hmm, you just used after- all six. You emptied all six barrels and then uh-huh. speed loader. Exactly. 
Exactly, and he's still down one shot after... Wait, no, that was two. So yeah, he's he's back to... Yeah, he's back to full again. Okay, and let me go ahead and have you roll uh, some saving throws, please. Mm -hmm. That's going to be a total of three saving throws. And these are what type of saving throws? Uh, that would be uh, wisdom, wisdom saving okay. throws. That's a Ooh, natural, that a natural one? one. Double the psychic damage, cool. please. From that, nice. from that one. And from that one, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then a save, and then a save. Asena, you're going to be up next. Your limit break is going to kick in. You've got luck dice. It's about to be bad. For me. Perfect. Uh, I'll give you some totals in a moment. And that's uh, that's it for John's turn. Okay. Asena. Oh. And uh, while we're at it, just because I haven't used one in a while, um, John is going to empty a uh, Scorching Ray bullet as one of the uh, shots that he's casting. All right. So that gives you three so, Scorching Ray attacks. Yeah, so suck on... Let me go ahead and click Scorching Ray here. Where are you? They're going to ask me what they want to cast it at. Okay, oh, there's... Oh, well, it should not have the psychic damage. Ignore... <laughs> the psychic damage. Ignore the psychic damage. Just keep doing math, Matt. Just keep doing math. So I'm just going to click this. It's three times, right? Three re rays, you said? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, that was crap. And finally... So the way that I like to imagine 20. it, <laughs> wow. The way I like to imagine it is that as you fired, the scorching rays just were along with each bullet. So you shot three yeah. lines of fire directly at it. Exactly. And I'll I'll count all this up and, and get okay. it to you. <laughs> uh, so what would happen is normally that would have defeated Ralzamon, but uh, he's going to sacrifice his clones to restore himself. Oh, so should I even bother? No, yes, you should, because I'm going to use the oh. hit point totals. This math matters. Great. They, okay, they increase, cool. He can sacrifice each one for a set amount of health. Fantastic. So okay, start cool. doing math, but Asena, you have the mm -hmm. uh, you have the moment, and as this hypnosis comes over you, and you take all of this damage, a chilling cold force of will rises up through you, embodied by the powers of necromancy that you've used, and the whales of the dead that you've <laughs> used, and this spine whip that's lashed around this dead ghost, this old shell of a dead old man. And the power of the grave surrounds you. What do you want to do? That's cool. Um, I want to rip the spine lash off of him. So just like spin and pull it and just Yeah. <sighs> okay. And then hit him with it again. Okay. <laughs> For your limit break, you may make four attacks at advantage instead of two. Oh my god! And Tasha's mind whip stays on all of them. Okay. That's so great. <laughs> yep. Hit. Yep. Hit. Three hits and a crit. <laughs> okay. Do me a favor and roll. That'd be nine. Uh, plus three, 12. Roll 15d6, please, for psychic damage. Oh my gosh. Okay. 15d6. 55. Okay, hold on. Uh, I just reduced his health, and now I'm going to sacrifice his clones to restore that health. And then I'm going to inflict that was, uh, all... 144 points of damage. I saw that in chat. Health. Okay. <laughs> so... All right. He was at 24, and then he took... 144, and then he sacrificed one of them to regain plus 96, which would not have actually brought him back to life. So he sacrifices another one to give himself plus 96, which does bring him back to life. And then Asena just starts tearing him to shreds with the whales of the grave, inflicting, how much is this? 11 plus 19 is 30 plus 18 is 48. You crit with a spine lash again? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. my gosh. <laughs> so I'm, at, I'm at 48 plus 17 is 65 plus 9 is 74 plus 74 plus 55. Math is hard. You know what? Hold on. I'm just going to do this. Here's the 74. He sacrifices his last right? clone to gain that back. Then he takes the 55 damage. He is now still clinging to life, but flickering as he just drained all the power of his clones back into himself to heal himself like for nearly 300 hit points, and he's wow. bloodied. Oh my gosh. You have a bonus action, yes. Asana. What would you like to do with it? Oh my gosh. Um, I don't know. 
I guess he killed the other ones, right? Uh, no, you can have he the credit. You dealt the damage that killed them. Okay, then... Um... How does that work? What are you looking if, for? If I get if I get the credit, then I want to use my whale. Is that a bonus action to do that oh. damage? And how much damage does oh, it do? Good question. I'll let you do it because your limit break. Well, so, it can't be an action. Because is it, does it say it just goes off automatically? It just says, as you nudge someone close to the grave, you could channel the power of death. Mm -hmm. So it just happens? No action? Yeah, it just happens. Okay. Okay, cool. So how many sneak attack dice did you roll on that? Because you got sneak attack for all of them for your limit break. How, what's your oh sneak attack gosh. die? Oh, it like, is... How many do you get? I don't know, 2d6. 2d6? Okay, so 2, 4, 6. Uh, roll 10d6, and we're going to we're gonna divide it by 2 for your whales of the grave. Okay, an additional 15 points of damage against him. He continues to flicker his f enormous ethereal form starting to float away bits and pieces. It doesn't bleed, but it starts to like just ooze smoke and ectoplasm. You still have a bonus action, Asena. I do. What do you want to do with it? Um, 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 can I punch him? Absolutely. I imagine you like <laughs> lash, 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 grab him, pull yourself towards him, and then punch him. With yeah. the Castlevania the up in yeah. this thing. And if you spend a, you still have double attacks for your limit break this round. So if you spend a focus point, you can punch him four times. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Okay. And then the limit break is up. <laughs> <laughs> Make four Let's attacks at advantage. Okay. Oh my gosh. We're gonna, we're gonna do it. Take this, Rousey Poo! And don't okay. forget, you have okay. two you know lucky dice that you know are what? this encounter. <laughs> two misses, two hits, unless you want to spend luck dice on those. Because you can't spend inspiration on those, but you can spend luck dice if you want. The luck dice helps... You get to roll an additional d20, and you pick the best of three instead of the best of two. Sure. Cool. Just roll two attacks, two flat attacks, no advantage or anything. All right. They both turn into hits, so we're going to take all this damage. That's six. That's 11. That's 17. That's 10. That's 27. Uh, plus eight is 35. As you roar and fly through the air... You deliver a crushing blow with just your glowing astral fist. You punch him directly. The image shatters. Leaving you over this yawning gate into nothingness. Uh-oh. What do you do? Uh, uh, you're gonna we're going to going in, right? You, are uh, you going in? Razipu? He's just gone? No. Oh. That was an echo, the same echo he's been sending for us the entire time. He has to be down there, his true form. We know that Josiah Parsons is no more, but a piece of his essence remains. We have to go find it. Well, I guess we're going in then. Muted. I... Plus one XP. Muted. On your there shoulder, you bouncing up and down. Is it the real Slakura? Is it just Slakura no. appearing from the psychic landscape? You don't know, no. but your slime friend is with you. Real or not, Slakura's <laughs> presence is a comfort. Would you like to use Slakura's healing power since your limit break is over? Oh, yes. Okay. Heal yourself 3d8. Okay. We got 3d8. You heal for 15 points of damage as you punch him and then just plunge into the pit. John, do you follow? Oh, yeah. Uh, but before we do, I want to turn back and look at Rose. Is she all right? Rose is gone. Oh, sorry. I saw I saw her there. I wanted to make sure. <laughs> no, when you turn around, Rose is gone. Everybody who isn't like a real mind or Slakura, whose status of being real is as of yet unknown, has vanished. Leaving only the John, howling portal into which Josiah Parsons fell. John holds up his forearm for Chester to jump up on, and mm -hmm. he looks over at... Lawrence and his giant snake. All right, let's go. And he just jumps in after Asana. Okay. Lawrence jumps in. It's a pit party and everyone's invited. 
right. as Asena jumped in, mm -hmm. she did her little dragon wing float. Nice. Just to look really cool. You successfully look really cool. <laughs> okay. Give me a moment as you pass through time and space, a whirling vortex. The energies of this place batter you, toss you, spin you around in circles. John, you've experienced this before. You've both experienced this before. This is planar transit, traveling yeah. through a ragged portal, destroy a ruptured conduit that's been destroyed and damaged somehow. So you're saying if Asena wanted, she could just take us out of here. I mean, this right. isn't a real <laughs> astral portal, but uh, okay. you could <laughs> use that to mess with it. All right. Is that everything? Is that everything? Uh, yeah, I think that's everything. So it's almost everything. I just need to do this. I need to do this. As the astral landscape flows around you, you find yourself plummeting into this. Oh. <laughs> Whoa. Hello. Hello. Josiah Parsons is... He's landed, he's had the wind knocked out of him as he stands on this ancient platform glowing amidst a churning void, a vortex of arcane and extraplanar energies. You've all been scattered across the way. Uh, Lawrence is clinging to the side of a rock as the snake slithers down to like wrap around him and hoist him back up. John, nice. you landed way over here. Asena, you arrived with Sakura all the way over here. As these rocks churn and spin and these patterns of energy just go flaring around you. And Josiah looks up in awe and horror as he is suspended between worlds. Mate, I have a question. Fire away. As we were moving through the portal, could uh, Chester have tried to uh, take hold of and get near Asena so that they, they would end up in the same place as Asena? Roll a dexterity check for Chester. Rolling a dexterity check for Chester. The cat. Yes, yes, the cat. No, and Chester actually ends up slightly stranded over on a different rock entirely. Unfortunate. <laughs> <laughs> okay, battle has not yet resumed as Josiah Parsons stands looking at this cosmic churning chaos around all of you. Is there anything the two of you would like to do? Yeah, I want to yell at him. What are you going to yell? Have you been here down here the whole time? Josiah doesn't seem to hear you, or if he does, it's only out the edge of his mind, somewhere in the periphery. Excuse me. Have you been here the whole time? This is where I beheld the truth. This Mate, does John believe? Asena first and then John. What would you say, Asena? This is where you were held? <laughs> John, what were you saying? Does John believe that this is actually Josiah Parsons or another phantom as we make our way deeper and deeper within his collective chasm of consciousness? This is a, this is a memory echo of Josiah Parsons. This is not really him. This You're is still, phase two. This is phase two. Welcome to phase two. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Asena still has the remote that we can speak when she doesn't interact with mental contact with John, right? Yeah, you still have your, your comms. Uh, yeah, this is still memory, Parson. We need to kick his ass before we can find the real one. Roger that! And what do you do with that information? Can you grab my cat, by the way? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Your cat is fine. Wow. <laughs> Does Chester look fine? Chester's holding on to the rock because, surprise, in this extra planar void, gravity is still a thing. I was going to ask if gravity was still a thing. Yep, gravity is still, in fact, very much a thing. And there's a lot of chaotic, churning, bad stuff going on down there. Oh, poor Chester. You've been to broken worlds before where gravity still worked, and you've lost people there, so. Yeah. What? Sena still has their wings, though, right? 
Mm -hmm. Perfect. I mean, uh, technically, if I have my wings, then I should be allowed to, like, choose where to land. Roll an acrobatics check. Because there's a lot of, like, going on as you go, right? It's buffering, it's buffeting yeah, yeah. you around. But I'll give you an acrobatics check. A 16. You may move up to two rocks away from the rock that you're on. Oh. Starting with the rocks closest to you. So like this rock, this <laughs> rock, this rock, this rock, and this rock. These are yeah. all like one rock away. So you can okay. go two rocks away. Nice. Uh, That's a scientific measurement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, in, in the U.S., we don't like to use standard metrics. We use washing machines. We use bananas. We use mm -hmm. rocks. You we'll know? do anything to avoid using the metric system. Exactly. I'll go to the Chester Rock then. Okay. Oh. All right. You you are with Chester on the rock with your astral dragon wings active. Chester scampers up onto Asana's back and just latches on. It's like a, you've got Chester on one shoulder and and <laughs> Slakura <laughs> on the other, just hogging all the pets right now. Actually, I feel like Chester has a good enough idea of what Slakura is about. Would Chester be able to like? dive into Slakora, but just their head out so they can still breathe, but they're, like, protected <laughs> in this gel of slime. That happens, Slakura go, whoop, whoop. <laughs> Chester starts purring, like, just... And it makes Slakura just... <laughs> <laughs> this little right. subwoofer is just... <laughs> <laughs> All right, Lawrence is safe because he summoned a giant freaking snake. Josiah Parsons is still standing, just dumbfounded by what he's seeing out in the cosmos. What are the three of you going to do? Uh, mechanics question. Do we still have our initiative that we had last time, or are we out no. of initiative right Phase this point? two, new initiative. As soon as Perfect. guns are drawn or, or combat begins, you can roll for initiative. John just looks at Asena, takes out Krantaka. Well, on to phase two. Phase two. <laughs> and uh, he looks over at Josiah Parsons and shouts, Hey, uh, Rousey Poo, I think everything that has been said is already on the table. Let's get the show on the road. And he takes his large gun, aims it at the shell of what this creature, known as the Master of the Unknown, formerly was, and takes aim. Roll initiative. Pets go on your... On their master's turn. I'm not Chester's master anymore. He's my friend. <laughs> Pets go on their people's turns. There we go. Also, Ralzamon gets plus 12 to his initiative rolls, which is something I probably should have done, you know, earlier. But that's been on his character sheet the whole time. <laughs> but okay. unfortunately, player characters go before uh, non-player characters. So, John, you have the drop on him. Nice. And uh, with that, guess what John's going to do? <laughs> <laughs> bang, bang. Hey, question. Uh, uh -huh. Does this count as a different creature than the previous uh, Josiah Parsons? Uh, no, it's the same creature. So oh. is my is my curse still on Josiah Parsons? Yes, the curse is on Rouse of Josiah Parsons. They're all him. Everything cool. here is him. Everything here is cursed except for Perfect. you. Perfect. Fan freaking fantastic. John's going to activate Krontaka and go for it. Okay. Shoot the shot. I'm shooting. I take it you're within shot. acceptable range. I am within acceptable range, but I'm going to get closer because I doubled my movement speed and mm -hmm. I'm extremely acrobatic. So John's going to just attempt a big, even though gravity is in effect, he's going to attempt a real big jump. Cool. Roll an acrobatics check to make a real big jump. Okay. Let me go ahead and just see if I have anything aside from doubling my movement speed make sure I'm not missing anything. rat ta ta ta, -ta. Okay. I always forget this. Benefits from the effects of the haste spell, but you don't get all comatose afterwards for one round. Does haste say you get, like, an extra increase? action? Yeah, yeah, I was seeing if it, w like, made your speed, movement. extra action, plus two AC. Okay, well, then here's my acrobatics check. An advantage on deck saves. On deck saves, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. 25. Yeah, that's good. How far can I jump on a 25? Where, 25. where Can I get to a different rock? <laughs> yeah, you can get to... This rock. I'm gonna let you get as far as this rock on a 25. Perfect. Then John's gonna jump to this rock over here. Mm-hmm. And You're then just he's like going teetering to... on this thing. And do I need to make another acrobatics check to jump again? Yes. 
because I have 60 movement as part of this. Mm -hmm. And then I yep. can get to him. Is that you're cool? clear? You are clear. Perfect. John gets right up in his face. Okay. And well, I think this is going to go just about the same as it did last time, Mr. Parsons. Uh, we'll see you in a moment. The real you. And John's going to put the gun right into his face and just start pulling the trigger. Just hammer, okay. fan the hammer on this guy. All right. Flashbang and uh, right click. I see how it is. Exactly. Go for exactly. it. Let's see what happens. <sighs> All right. Give me. Just go ahead and give me three uh, saves. I'm sure I'm not going to miss on this guy. <laughs> he don't miss. He don't miss. And finally. There are all my saves. Go ahead and start doing quick maths uh, while he takes his Oh, my turn. last one didn't roll. Let me, hold on. Can you go through? There we go. And not a 19, unfortunate. Okay. Should I try and greed for it? No, I'm gonna hold on to Lucky. I shouldn't try and greed for it. Okay, <laughs> and uh, I'll go ahead and do my, I'll go ahead and do my math for you. Mm -hmm. Oh, I have a bonus action. Hey, uh, mate. Yeah? Sorry, since I went right into his face, can I just slightly change the order of that? Yeah, what do you mind? Uh, I would like for John to use his warlock hex. Can you? Oh, it's another hex. It doesn't have a save. Great. Um, until the spell ends, you get a 1d6 necrotic damage whenever you hit with an attack. So I'm just going to take an extra 1d6 yeah, per throw, attack. Throw that in there. Throw it all in there. Stack it up. It's going to be Josiah Parsons followed by Asena. Okay, and I'll go ahead and just uh, tally that. Oh, by the way, the saves all... Oh, they failed one save! Great! There you go. I get to get damage on the last one. Cool. And did you use your second action from haste? I did. Yeah, that was the three Great. attacks. It's, it's it. one haste and then double shot. Mm -hmm. And uh, John's, John's good. John's spent. Cool. All right. As a legendary action, Josiah Parsons, a.k.a. Ralzamon, unleashes... I am inside your brain on John. Please roll a DC 17 wisdom save. Uh, no, thank you. Mm, but <laughs> yes. <laughs> a DC 17 wisdom saving throw, you say? Mm-hmm. A 10, and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and bust one of those luckies. Okay, roll again. That was a 17. A 17? If it meets, it beats. Okay. That's all right. I'm just here to take your resources. There's a reason this is a multi-stage fight. <laughs> By the way, that's 91 points of psychic magic and necrotic damage. Okay. Well, the image of Josiah Parsons is... 91. My, uh, minus 91. That is almost exactly enough to destroy one echo of Ralzamon. Wow. Cool. In response, Ralzamon is going to use. Let's see. Mind Crush on Asena. Asena's no longer invisible, by the way. Just putting that out there. Yeah, that 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 broke a while ago, and she started beating the crap out of everybody. Yeah. Oh, twelve. <laughs> that is not a hit. <laughs> All right. Uh, that is it for him, but he has his legendary actions. Asena, it's your turn. Okay. How far away am I? Pretty far. No. But you can jump to get altitude and then glide with your wings. I jumped farther away just for Chester. Mm-hmm. That's annoying. Wait, what do you mean just for Chester? <laughs> um, yeah, I wanna, I'll jump and glide so okay. that way I could end up here. Well, a very easy athletics check. <laughs> very easy, you say? Yeah, really easy. Nothing could possibly go wrong. That easy, actually. You made it. All nice. right. You jump and glide. That's not even an action. Everybody except Lawrence Booker Green is now on the same central island. What do you do? I'm using the momentum. It's a jump, glide, and punch. Okay. Roll oh, that's cool. Your attack. Am I flanking? This is uh, not flanking. No, you're not oh, flanking. Oh, yeah, I have, but I have Slakura with me. You have Slakura, and you have John, who's also threatening him. So this is a John's advantage, but you do get a sneak attack. Okay. 
a natural one. Incredible. You have a lucky die. Wait, no, you used your lucky dies. You used uh -huh. both of the lucky die. Or did you use one? I think you used both. No, you used both. I yeah, used, used both. both. Profoundly unfortunate. That's fine. I'm just going to... I'm just gonna punch him again. Okay, roll your second punch. That is a hit. Josiah Pardon Parsons shatters like a man made of glass. Also, your enemies brought the big guns. <laughs> Somebody just played a stream loose card for heavy firepower. Oh. Josiah Parsons what? shatters like glass. A translucent echo of him is left as he looks up to the sky and his eyes transcending flickering back and forth. And then the entire island, he screams a piercing psychic shriek. The entire island erupts with synaptic static that engulfs all of you. I need everyone on the island to roll a intelligence saving throw, please. I don't um, usually get to do that, so I'm pretty excited. 21. <laughs> Eleven. I have a negative one in intelligence. Deeply unfortunate. <laughs> John is going to use his reaction. So that Desana saves instead. Okay. Do you have to roll a save versus corruption? I have to roll a save versus corruption. 23. Which you succeed on. Okay. <sighs> All right. Um, everyone who succeeded on their save takes 15 points of psychic damage. And if you succeeded on your save, your pet is excluded. Oh, but this, goody. this riveting, coruscating area of synaptic static stays. It is not going away. Josiah Parsons oh. fades as he stares into everything. This static rips him apart and it takes, it unravels his mind and his soul and distributes it throughout this place. What I have seen. What I have witnessed, you must be stopped, lest you invite the end of all things. And shapes emerge from the psychic what? wasteland. What? No. Shadows, echoes, horrifying monstrosities. Behold, Atropus. The de world born dead. Behold, Senepulker, its herald. An unspeakably enormous worm, its maw, a spiraling whirlwind of teeth. The chronophage flickering in and out of reality as you see what it is that Josiah Parsons saw as his mind was unraveled. He beholds the, why is there an arcade on my? Huh, that was odd. All right, well, I got disadvantage. <laughs> Anyways, you see all of the elder evils that you're aware of, and Josiah Parsons sees them as well as he is unraveled and transformed from the mortal he once was into Ralzamon, master of the unknown. And obviously, this is where we take our break. So we'll be back in six minutes, folks. We'll, uh, <laughs> don't go anywhere.